Now, the speakers of the day are Piotr Rutkowski, PhD in Humanitarian Humanities. Uh, hello. We have Vadim Mojeka, PhD in Cultural, Cultural Studies, uh, an analyst at BIS. And he's with us. And Andrei Vasilsky is going to join us later. He's a uh, culture expert, a culturologist. He's an invited expert at BIS. Just a reminder about the for, as to the format of our event. Well, first of all, the employees, the staff members of the BISS will make some introductory statements, uh, introductory presentation. They will run small presentations. And uh, essentially, they will tell uh, the reason for this occasion, why we're here, why we're all here. Afterwards, there will be a Q&A session and a discussion round. So please feel free to join in. Uh, feel free to ask the floor, to ask to have the floor in our chat. Raise your hands. Other, uh, in other words, identify yourselves if you wish to uh, speak up. So make yourself visible, bottom line. We will give you the floor. Right, accidentally muted myself. So Pyotr Rutkowski uh, is right here. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I suggest uh, the following bit in my statement to this presentation to this uh, presentation proper that is going to be shown uh, briefly. This is the representation of the outcomes of monitoring that was uh, under the, uh, that was uh, happening under the supervision of Vadim Majeka. Uh, in parallel with the identity index, uh, which is the subject matter of today's conference, is also where we have analyzed multiple factors, various factors, that facilitate or uh, inhibit uh, democratization and repetition of autocracy. On my part, uh, but in correlation to today's topic, I will offer the following bits, the following things. First of all, uh, the ways how national identity can facilitate or vice versa impede uh, combating autocracy uh, and the democratization. We are distinguishing the two uh, combating or defeating the autocracy and democratization, these are two distinct uh, different uh, different things for us. Not uh, So both are desired, but not all factors that facilitate democratization, uh, not all factors uh, contribute uh, overthrowing the autocracy. Okay, the meaning of national identity for combating autocracy and uh, democratization. Systematic analysis or system analysis uh, in this domain is very difficult. Uh, it's uh, hard to come by at the same time. But every now and then, culturologists, culturologists uh, polit political scientists uh, raise this topic. Uh, look, uh, look away, uh, the American political scientist, politologist, is also the, uh, a friend of uh, Vitaly Savitsky. He's the ex. Uh, general manager of uh, our BIS Institute. He's well known, uh, that American gentleman, he's, a, uh, he's well known, well proficient in democratic transformations. And he specifically knows that, especially in the ex-Soviet countries, the presence of national identity uh, is uh, perceived to be irrelevant to the current political course. It undermined the potential of the regime and it facilitated mobilization of opposition uh, where the civil community was weak, civil society was weak. Uh, whether the situation is true for, to, for today's Belarus, uh, well, that's not until the end, or maybe to, to even a small extent, the, the rise of, to, of 2020, the rise of identity, uh, that was basically the uh, rise of the, of the civil society. Uh, national identity did not have uh, a great role in this. However, the potential of national community 
uh, that's uh, what we need to gauge in terms of uh, combating and defeating the, the autocracy. OK, so several things to point out here. I'm abstracting from the Belarusian situation. This is not my objection, objective uh, to uh, currently run a presentation as to uh, the Belarusian identity, whether it's strong or weak. I would like to uh, paint you a big picture, the conceptual one. Uh, so whether the national identity is weak and uh, whether it's strong, what it, what it means. Strong national identity is not an unambiguous factor of democratization. It's not necessarily correlating. Uh, there is a Polish Democratic Republic uh, example in the time of communism or the Baltic nations uh, of the Soviet era. This is how it goes. A very strong national feeling, a very strong feeling of national identity, cultural identity. It uh, did play a very important role in combating and overthrowing uh, a totalitarian regime and uh, democracy. Uh, the Slobodan Milosevic time, uh, Yugoslavia, early 90s, uh, contemporary Central Asian countries, uh, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan, first and foremost, where nationalism was quite successfully instrumentalized by the authoritarian regimes proper. It actually became the component to legitimize uh, the authoritarian rule, authoritarian regimes in these regions. So what is the role of uh, this, this strong national identity? It depends on whether the the uh, uh, autocracy in question can make national uh, identity part of their agenda, big part of their agenda. If uh, the democratic feeling is strong in the community, uh, but uh, the autocracy cannot monopolize national identity, an earlier or later national uh, movement, uh, the national identity will catalyze the changes. Polish Democratic Republic and uh, Baltic nations, uh, this is a very good example to showcase uh, what, I've, what I've been saying. So in this context, in this context, uh, democratization and the force of national identity, this uh, is relative. When national identity is strong in the community, in the nation, but uh, the regime failed to find the common language uh, with the uh, national movement. Uh, this, will, this fact of the national movement will be a constant threat, a permanent threat to the regime. And it's very difficult to neutralize that kind of threat, to, to weaken it uh, through repression, reprisals, through repressive nation, uh, oppression. Strong national feeling is uh, kind of a water that flows no matter what. It's uh, this energy of this water, it's very difficult uh, to, to, to punch a fist and stop it, to punch it with a fist and stop it, try to stop it. When uh, the regime uh, finally uh, succeeds, uh, ultimately succeeds in becoming the monopolist in national identity, in this case, national, strong national identity becomes the impeding factor uh, for overthrowing this kind of regime. It's very difficult, it's much more difficult to overthrow the regime backed by national identity. So that's for the ambivalence of a strong national identity. If, uh, if the national identity is weak, it's uh, not properly shaped, it's not uh, completely outlined. So what can happen in this situation? When the national identity is weak, it's, uh, it's, it's typically compensated either at the subnational level, basically locally, regionally, local regional differences, become an important factor, ethnical clan, tribe factors in African countries, particularly this is visible, or there is an increased demand for supranational. This could be pan-Slavism, pan Russian world. The, the Russian world is not limited uh, to Russia alone. It's uh, uh, kind of designed to be a civilization offer to the other nations. Uh, the Western world, the Western civilization is another case. Uh, weak national identity, but still a strong community. Pan Latin American, uh, Hugo Chavez, the Chavism, it's uh, quite up, quite high up there. 
national identity did play, as a weak national identity did play a big role in shaping that regime. So when the weak national identity is compensated at the national uh, level, a supranational level, it basically depends on uh, as to what's happening at that supranational level. It could be the Russian world that goes beyond Russia. It could be uh, the Western world. As an example, uh, let's cite New Zealand, Australia, uh, the Caribbean countries, where the national identity is kind of problematic. There is no unique language. They don't speak a unique language. Uh, there's no uh, strong religious identifier. Uh, it's true, they're, they're islanders. Many of those nations are uh, based on islands, so this facilitates national identity. But nonetheless, uh, the cultural language uh, identity factors uh, are kind of uh, missing. Nonetheless, it is compensated at the supranational level, uh, the British Commonwealth. This is what unites them. And uh, through that British Commonwealth, uh, uh, through the British uh, Commonwealth, uh, they ba they're basically part of the Western world. So this is a factor that facilitates democratization. So when the weak national identity is compensated at the supranational level, but uh, the democratic values are not welcome, which is uh, Eurasian, the Russian world, Eurasian, con uh, Eurasian countries, uh, China, in that direction, but there's, there's no good good example for that, where weak national identity is compensated uh, at, the, at the supranational level uh, and the, the democratic values are not welcome. This can become an impeding factor. That factor inhibits democratization and it basically precludes uh, from overthrowing the authoritarian rule if there is one in the country. So this is, this is the situation with uh, strong and weak national identity. Uh, the third case, uh, I haven't, presented it, it's, it's not a Belarusian case where uh, a weak national identity is compensated at the sub-national level, sub-national locally. Uh, African countries uh, are quite, quite, quite a strong example in that. So overthrowing authoritarian regime, it's uh, most likely a plus. It's uh, possible to mobilize uh, democratization with weak national identity, but strong sub-national identity. It's easy to uh, get them to overthrow the democracy, but uh, democratization is limited. The democratization opportunities are limited. It's very difficult uh, to switch to a fully functional democracy. So this is this is the kind of this this is uh, kind of a problem. At the end, I would like to show uh, a summary table of what I have said. Can can you see it? Yes, uh, yes, we can see. It. Yes, Peter, we can we can see it. Yes, Peter. Yeah, just just in case, just double checking. All right, left hand side, you can see the factors: weak national identity in uh, strong strong national identity above, uh, weak national identity uh, below. And there's comparison. Uh, like I've mentioned, for strong national identity, it could be the option of nationalistic autocracy, where the autocracy managed to mobil monopolize and mobilize uh, the, na the national identity discourse in their favor. In that case, uh, the autocratic is very good. On the right-hand side, you can see the uh, neg in Russian, that's negative. Uh, as for democratization, if in that regime, uh, the autocracy is toppled, uh, in that case, uh, strong national identity is a neutral factor in switching to democratization. In case uh, there is no national uh, identity underpinning the autocracy, this is the second line there. Uh, so that's a factor for throwing the talk. If the state uh, does not uh, lean on, does not rely on uh, national ideology, so this it, it can turn against. Caribbean nations, Caribbean nations. Uh, so it's a positive factor. When the weak national identity is compensated at the supranational level where democratic values are not welcome, in both cases it's negative. Uh, so it's 
uh, virtually impossible to overthrow the autocracy and it's very virtually impossible to switch to democracy the, the transition to democracy is very difficult uh, if uh, weak national identity is compensated at subnational level uh, it's a positive factor for the overthrowing the autocracy in uh, in terms of uh, uh, transition to democracy it's a negative one so let me wrap up there thank you for your attention okay thank you very much indeed now i'd like to give the floor to vadim Majeka. he is also going to show the slides uh, in this case they will be shown by me let me open them here it comes vadim uh, the index of identity index the floor is yours okay thank you anton indeed our today's uh, presentation is uh, first and foremost it's uh, precisely linked to, to the index of identity i would like to ask you when you're running your slide deck i mean so th this is your screen right i cannot i cannot really yeah we, we can see you as well so it's it's all right okay got it okay so the identity index i wish to emphasize that it's a, it's a it's an innovative product it's of innovative nature this is the issue number one it's a pilot issue we uh, put forward a very ambitious objective we did not want to identify uh, the identity we did not want to only speak in terms of values some abstract notions we wanted to make uh, some criteria to measure it we wanted to make use of them uh, at the outset i wish to say that uh, there are certain sociological uh, difficulties uh, some things are simply not possible or virtually impossible and the, the second disclaimer the figures we're talking about they're instrumental and they're just a tool for us to understand the tendencies they're not absolute we definitely did not set an objective to quantify the level of identity that's in place in the community uh, in the nation today it cannot be quantified in, in figures so the figures are just a relative uh, help to reflect the tendencies uh, anton can you can you get me to slide two right so what did we do it for what was the reason and how over the past years all of us have seen a, a lot of things a lot of changes in the belarusian identity uh, so some changes have been positive uh, some are, some were not really however this topic uh, change of identity is a very important one uh, it uh, causes a lot of emotion and uh, we wanted uh, to try and facilitate objective understanding of changes in the belarusian national identity through systematic analysis of related events and statements we wanted to run a more or less systematic analysis uh, as the as i have just said events and statements so it's not just abstract theories it's more about the changes that are happening right here right now so basically outline the issues with identity if there are any or uh, characterize some positive uh, things some upsides that have been there for years uh, but uh, the positive tendency is also seen particularly for the monitoring and analysis of these changes uh, that's that's what our product the identity index is designed for uh, let's uh, get objective and specific transparent analysis of open source information this is the main tool of our analysis that means that uh, we are not proceeding from hearsay from some rumors uh, from some inside information insider stuff or uh, things that somebody told but nobody heard and so on and so forth we analyze open source publicly available information and we are geared by uh, so we we comply by uh, we comply with uh, the transparency uh, principle our methodology is published we publish all those source tables that describe all the events and statements that have been made over the period in question the started period we will be talking about that later on so just a reminder the time frame is uh, for for the pilot issue is august uh, through october 2020 uh, those who are aware of the belarusian context uh, i don't have to explain you twice why we're starting from that time frame 
and why the events that happened back then were extremely important, were paramount for national identity. In total, the statements and ideas uh, that we're including, it's open source uh, information, it's public, it's transparent. So it was uh, perfectly clear uh, from which events, uh, from the, which uh, um, aspects we're proceeding from. So uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, analysis, uh, combined analysis. Uh, so that's, uh, we realize that the topic of identity is not some in-house product. It's, it's not the GDP, it's not uh, the yield of crops, it, it's not measurable in figures. But uh, we proceed from the fact that figures do help. At the same time, we need some expert ratings, uh, expert assessment that will help us rest assured uh, that within a certain corridor of confidence, uh, corridor, uh, confidence interval, uh, we made a five ratio system. And there are ratings, one to 10, the importance of that event or statement uh, and how it affects uh, the identity, positively or negatively. It could be one small event, like 10, 10 people uh, participating, or it could have been a movement uh, that uh, hundreds of thousands of people participated. However, at the last minute, well, I wanted to voice that. Uh, that's our system of five ratios, or five coefficients, uh, let's call them ratios in English. Uh, so uh, for each event, uh, we determine who is the recipient of that message or event. So that could be some vibrant uh, community leaders or political leaders, or just uh, rank and file uh, um, passersby so that, that, passes that uh, go and uh, that walk up and uh, make a statement. And so we also list uh, who was participating in the event, uh, who voiced the idea, and how broadly it could have impacted uh, the uh, society. Also, the magnitude uh, of uh, the event uh, or statement was analyzed, if it's a local one or a national one. If it's a, a strong and local, it's uh, less impactful than a small and nationwide. But it could have, if it could have impacted or could have triggered uh, uh, something at the national level. Sustainability, that's another uh, coefficient. So how uh, will sporadic or sustainable a statement is, like a national language is good, Belarusian language is good. So how many people said that it did, did this tendency uh, go down or not? A, a new textbook on, in, in Belarusian, something like that. And the final coefficient uh, between uh, the phenomenon or events, uh, there are multiple important factors, uh, but we proceed from the fact that actions speak louder than the words. And uh, well, saying something is easier than the, the getting something done or doing something. Uh, actions are, uh, they go much uh, uh, farther than just good words. And just a reminder, this index has been published at the BIS website. You can have a look at it. So you can check out the full version of the methodology. You can read up on the methodology. Uh, transparent sources and the detailed table spreadsheets uh, that were put together to make this index happen. And so you'll be able also to monitor and identify the way those uh, ratings were assigned. Next slide, please. Each time when we bring up the national identity bit, uh, it's very important to talk about positive and negative uh, features or positive and negative aspects uh, that can affect it. Now, there's no a single model of national identity that uh, would be acknowledged that so this is the only way to run national identity and there's no other way. Possibly there is no uh, strong authoritative figure who could have offered something like that. Identity can be reformed or can, can get reformed, can evolve. However, uh, we've identified several very important points uh, based on which we have built the so-called normative uh, identity. And striving to it, uh, we are uh, analyzing and assessing various events. Well, first item is the perception of the Belarusian language as a factor of distinction or distinctiveness. It could be multiple factors, whether the Belarusian language is the only uh, language or should be the only official language in the country or not. So there are ideas and statements uh, that uh, favor or impede the Belarusian language development. 
somebody can say that Belarusian language is artificial, it doesn't exist, uh, so that's, that statement is clearly negative, and vice versa. The second bit here is the uh, emphasis on the cultural identity and the political potential of the Belarusian people, and the related imperative to protect and develop the national uh, cultural and political sovereignty and territorial integrity of the country. If uh, the statement is positive, that all of this is important, uh, it's, a positive, it's a positive phenomenon, it's a positive event, it's a positive statement. Or uh, somebody saying that uh, Belarus should become a part of some, uh, some other nation, it, it is not a nation of its own, it is incapable of building a nation of its own. So that's a negative statement, obviously. Now, the third bit uh, that has become particularly prominent in the past uh, months, acceptance of the white, red, white uh, flag and the Pahonia coat of arms as the nation affirmer, is something that affirms the nation. So it's not just uh, uh, there are uh, positive and negative statements circulating, uh, revolving around that. Uh, just a uh, note here, we're talking about the white red white flag and the Pahonia coat of arms as the national and historical, uh, historic uh, symbols, historic emblems. We did not uh, take into account uh, any statements about other flags uh, or other coats of arms. Uh, so positive statements or negative statements about the official red and green flag, that, well, that's important, but uh, this was not the subject matter of our uh, research. This is not the part of our national identity model. So we have not been talking about that. Support of the historical narrative about the formation and development of the Belarusian nation. It's quite uh, correlating, so whether Belarusians exist as a nation or vice versa, there are ideas about that Belarus is an artificial country, there's, there's no such nation as Belarusians, uh, negative aspects, or there is a, a commitment to, to disseminate information about national history, national culture, and so claiming that Belarus is a nation and has been. Uh, and the final bit here is the commitment to local identity as an element of the nation one, uh, na the nationwide one. We're talking about the local identity as a, as a part of the nationwide national identity. We can say that uh, we are citizens of the Vitebsk Oblast uh, or the Khoiniki uh, Rayon or some, some small uh, district or some small town, and we are a part of the Belarusian nation. And this opposes uh, the separatist uh, movement where some, when some local identity becomes uh, opposing or starts opposing the national identity. They claim themselves not to be Belarusians, for example. So it's uh, possible to find various points of sophistication, some sophisticated stuff, uh, more in intricate, more uh, in-depth. Uh, we're talking about the big picture here, because without painting in the big picture, about the cultural identity, local identity, it's very, uh, the national identity, it's impossible to you know, talk about upsides and downsides. It's, it's impossible to characterize various events without the big picture. All right, so now the next slide, please. Uh, this one is the ratio of scores uh, for particular domains. Uh, these are quantitative findings of our first uh, pilot issue of identity index. This is the scores that each of the actors uh, uh, got. And we, events are uh, separated either to the uh, community, the nation, the public, uh, the state, and business. Gramatsko, uh, Zarzava, and business. In this case, looking at this chart, we can say that the contribution of the community, the contribution of the public, uh, to strengthen the national identity has uh, been over 80%, 84.3 to be exact. If we were to summarize all the uh, actions, all the statements by the public, uh, well, yes, uh, the, the, the state did something, the business did something, the businesses or the business at large. And uh, well, obviously this was a, uh, the, the latter two were of less significant contribution. Uh, the biggest contribution was made by the public to strengthen the national identity. This is the main finding of our, of our work. It helps uh, say with, uh, 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 with a higher degree or with a higher extent of certainty who contributes uh, to the construction of the national identity. It's not uh, a statement per se, a statement in a, in a vacuum. It is backed by specific outcomes. 
the final, oh, this is, this is the next slide, please. Uh, so before we talk about the public uh, contribution, the, there were some also contributions by the government, not necessarily positive. 37 events have been identified, uh, committed by the state. It could have been events, it could have been statements on the part of uh, public affairs, state officials. Uh, 27 uh, were positive for the national identity, 10 were negative. The total score was 183, 183. The highest score, 50, was the events celebrated uh, of the day of Belarusian literacy. Uh, I would say that uh, this is a traditional thing for the Belarusian uh, country for, for, the, for Belarus, important statements have been made uh, on this day and the festivity itself. Well, it's, this celebration is, is positive, uh, positive attitude uh, to Belarusian language, Belarusian culture, hence the highest score. And the lowest scores, uh, minus 11, were awarded to propaganda articles uh, in the context of uh, uh, the current political opposition. There were articles of, by propaganda like where does the white red white flag lead us and uh, the symbols of the so-called peaceful protests uh, have you forgotten your history lessons uh, so these these were the propaganda statements about the symbols so these are the state events or uh, that are positively uh, linked to national identity uh was state backed uh, this is government run Typically, these are regional, uh, regional events and their routine. What do I mean by that? These are some small-time gigs uh, that either small-time events that uh, local culture departments uh, at uh, regional level uh, make. Uh, so there are good things about uh, Belarusian language, Belarusian culture, local culture, local traditions, Belarusian traditions at large. Uh, there's positivity around that. And looking at these mainstream ide ideas, mainstream news, we might even overlook it. It might not seem as significant as, as something else. But since these activities, since these events uh, are, are numerous, uh, each one is small, like I said, it's, each one is small time. But there are so many of them happening at various localities. It's very difficult uh, to not recognize the positive benefit, the positive contribution uh, that the, 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 they actually contribute something good. The next slide, uh, the next findings about the state, what the state uh, did. Quite a lot of events have been linked uh, to regionality. There was the year of the little motherland uh, announced recently. However, in some cases, uh, it was positive, uh, positive, positive to say about the totacious, uh, the, lo the local mindset. Uh, we're locals, we're not a nation, we're just locals where positive things were uttered, but nonetheless, uh, there was some local identity that is uh, uh, torn away, that is kind of uh, siloed from the national identity. And in this case, uh, this, uh, we are locals, not Belarusians. Uh, well, those tendencies, again, somebody might have been afraid or might have been motivated by something, some, some other factors, and uh, reluctant to claim that they are Tutesha, that they're just locals. Uh, these regional ideas, uh, the, the regional events uh, can be construed as uh, the manifestation of this lo local mindset. Uh, not necessarily the case, but uh, there are tendencies to say that. Uh, the anti-Polishness of Belarusian, uh, that narrative has also been quite strong. In terms of uh, worsening relations uh, between Minsk and Warsaw and the sanctions, uh, there was still narratives about anti-Polish nature. In some articles, uh, there were direct statements that uh, some local events are not ours, we're not Polish people, we're Belarusians, and so on and so forth. Particularly, this was notable in the kastush kalinowski related, the, 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 the uprising, the rebellion by kastush kalinowski it was uh, mid-19th century. It was claimed to, uh, to have been the events of not Belarusian history, but Polish history that was imposed on us as Belarusian. At the same time, yeah, that was the negative bit about that article, but there was also positivity that saying that Belarus is not supposed to be uh, against, it's not supposed to be opposing the Kastus Kalinowski rebellion. It was supposed to, be, to have been the part of the Russian Empire. Not, it was, it was not the case. It was said that Belarus is supposed to be independent without any uh, third party or third country influence. 
so there have been some constructive things uh, in that article, but the narrative of anti-Polishness, anti-Polish attitude, uh, well, it can be confusing and it can trigger a question whether that kind of anti-Polish attitude is actually uh, adverse uh, for uh, the identity, the national identity. Uh, fighting political opponents uh, through the narrative of the fascist and artificial nature of the white red white uh, flag. It was claimed that the white red white flag is, an, is a Nazi one, is a fascist one, it's artificial. And Anton, the next slide, please. Yeah, this uh, this is the heading, this is the screenshot from the website of the sb.by. This is the uh, presidential administration uh, newspaper and uh, media speculations on pseudo national and national attributes or symbols are not just anti-historic but also anti-humane uh, so these are the kind of articles uh, that were scored uh, uh, that, that scored the lowest points negative points okay let's uh, digress uh, from those complicated uh, bad stuff let's talk about the public contribution what uh, the people have done over this uh, time frame august uh, through october 2020 59 events have been recorded 58 are positive one is negative the final score is 1259 1259 well that high score is based on august uh, street rallies 342 and separately uh, there were some post-election events in grodno that have also been very constructive 288 points however at the same time i also um, mentioned even if uh, we had removed uh, the august rallies and the grodno events scores even without that the public score would have been the highest uh, higher than the state higher than the businesses the only statement to receive negative score minus five was one by the pro-government Malta disciplinary public figure uh, Yulia Artsyuk. She said that I will lay down my bones, but the white red white flag will never rise above, above our country. Well, the context is clear and the significance is clear. The, 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 the negative score is also self-explanatory. Self Let's go to the next slide. So the events uh, that have uh, uh, scored the highest points uh, from the, on the part of the public. There are many great shots uh, from August rallies. In this case, I would just outline methodologically that these events are somewhat uh, an ideological challenge. It's difficult uh, to analyze the actions of each uh, participant that, that uh, just picked up and raised the white red white flag. If we analyze that, that could have been a table involving hundreds of thousands of participants. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense in the event index. These indices uh, were not just geared towards uh, strengthening the identity. I mean, the people were not raising the flags uh, to elevate the status of the Belarusian language or to uh, make uh, the white red white flag uh, the national symbol again. Uh, they were pursuing some political reasons, clearly. However, nonetheless, even though this did happen, uh, there was a huge rise of, of the use of the national symbols. And there was a huge share of uh, public solidarity. Uh, th this uh, contributes to national integrity, national unity. Next slide, please. Apart from that, uh, from those street rallies, uh, uh, there was also mass public support of nation building processes by celebrities. Uh, so we, uh, th these people that uh, every Belarusian, pretty much every Belarusian knows, or people who stay silent on political topics, so they also came forward. Uh, so artists, actors, philosophers, Instagram models, a, a very diverse uh, range of celebrities did speak up in favor. They supported the national identity uh, of Belarusians. Uh, they were proud to be Belarusians. They either said that or they were uh, amazed uh, looking at the events from the outside. Some of them are not even Belarusians or they, they are Belarusians that live in Russia or in other countries, not necessarily close by. So this kind of support, mass public support, 
uh, by celebrities is a positive contribution. However, nonetheless, all these events uh, that were happening in a certain political context, and uh, we, we saw that uh, some people were fighting for the national symbols, some were strengthening the national identity. At the same time, we saw uh, the way uh, the, the government could have opposed that. The next slide is the piece of news uh, that came recently. Uh, a Minsk dweller stole the national symbol to make a white red white flag out of it. Uh, that's uh, how the people got inspired by the national identity and the person just went ahead and repainted the official uh, red and green flag to make a white red white and we can we can see the uh, uh, we can see the reaction of the state they filed a criminal investigation and unfortunately that uh, that person was held criminally liable so all those uh, shreds so of the, uh, what used to be once uh, the this green kind of and, uh, pieces red However, flag they were found this, and uh, he was found guilty uh, activity, on that crime but uh, the, the activities uh, I mean, the, this, this instance itself finally, is very important uh, it's very interesting last but not the least uh, the final is bit is about business Business it was, did uh, have not much too many events happening there. Thanks to celebrate uh, right. remarks, so they uh, all were marked as positive uh, the highest and highest number of points. Is the statements by the businesses uh, that uh, joined the strike? The, the, the highest score number 18 was. Uh, and then, so they, they the found this very important. By next that next slide. Us, the, the October so one of such uh, announcements. Uh, so this is that a very is definitely uh, illustrating. So our so incredible this, this clients was, uh, done by businesses. As of October the 26th, our uh, shop is closing down. Was, we hope that uh, you will not use our services because you are staying home. Uh, we don't know where we, when we will be open. Uh, we we'll see you in the new buildings. So uh, this is the companies for the uh, this is when some companies uh, posed uh, of put uh, the, the uh, national interests uh, before their profits. Uh, so that they they actually profit. shut down so just, to strengthen the national, national identity to from the point of view of strengthening of the national identity. It's, and it's uh, well clearly it's a positive this, tendency. Uh, uh, the final slide, or the penultimate uh, slide. So just, just one comment positive. that I would like to share. So this it's is just my observation. It's not linked to the index. index. So it is not uh, grounded on the symbol, on the, on the figures uh, that I've just shown. Based we did not uh, where uh, certain make a uh, analysis, analysis of how, how business was behaving. The businesses However, used to as before, but as an expert overseeing uh, this process, this processes, processes, I saw I that uh, business activities that uh, the related geared towards issues related to business and then related to national identity were showing much higher, much in the wider. And this events, processes, uh, in the current a lot situation, of issues arises and symbols uh, are used uh, and politicized. Strongly politicized. And then, no, number of so businesses, many businesses, uh, somebody so might, they might be afraid of this kind of stuff. Doing so, Others uh, they, they uh, believe that this is down. appropriate. So, they, they, so that was uh, uh, recollecting aspects on the, based on the back burner. Leader beer. Uh, there was, was a special uh, co co collection uh, showing the, of, uh, the Belarusian National Belarusian uh, Republic uh, map. Uh, 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 was uh, and by these, beer producer uh, in, in Lider. Bottles, uh, and they just, were uh, judging from the on sale uh, with, uh, with a red, red white, uh, white, red, white uh, flag. Close, close to so this is well, a event well, they did uh, beyond the index. It's just my observation beyond the index, the activity uh, there was of a business. decrease in public activity by businesses. It's kind of so some events uh, uh, based on my uh, that were happening that was like Belarusian weekends yeah, by yeah. Belcom. It's currently a one uh, so uh, called weekends. If something like that happens so uh, in the time frame uh, that we've analyzed, the, we know uh, that during the period that was considered and then we were pleased to, to analyze. note it. This is where finally, I would like to uh, uh, next slide. wrap up. This is the that final is slide showing the, the acknowledgments. The this is team the that was team of the uh, index. working to develop the indices. Uh, so I've been coordinating. I was, uh, supervising one the activity. The, I was used to be one, one of the experts, experts uh, who was awarding scores. So the one of the uh, experts. One invited expert by BIS, Andrei, Andrei Rasinski. Uh, and then we are very grateful to it. Uh, for for he's, the uh, uh, he's done a great job, so I'm very really thankful for his contribution. Anastasia Yuriva, our then, associated analyst, and Jakub Dinko, our uh, intern. So they actually he, have been they assisting were collecting with uh, the data. Data. 
and then the, so that we were uh, able they are to assessing this and i would like to thank all our team for this uh, work i would like to we would thank our uh, uh, union thank you for for doing this i would like to give the floor to uh, Andrei Rasinski, uh, let him share his uh, findings, uh, some uh, things that he identified when working on the index. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Thanks a like lot, to... dear colleagues. I would... Andrei, we... Andrei, we... Uh, Andrei's microphone has been switched off. Uh, respected ladies and gentlemen, I would like to elaborate to, to what Vadim stated, but it's related to complex. And then uh, it's really uh, a lot of difference how the national identity is uh, influenced by the society, what the society does, which uh, way it reacts on the, uh, um, the events and activities and developments, and then what is done by the state. The state first of all, is represented, first of all, by regional or folklore uh, level. Uh, when we speak about positive stuff that is related to national identity as a rule, this kind of regional events and activities, which uh, have been known uh, since the USSR times. So Belarus was uh, introduced like, uh, represented like ethnographic. That's important. So that that the uh, state is approaching the uh, issue from the negative point of view, whereas the state, whereas the society is building from the positive point of view. Then, we, if we take uh, the evaluation of uh, uh, then state is built. Uh, by the neg negation of others. And then the renewal is done by the first and the most important uh, item point. It's a revival of the uh, white, red and white flag. And then it's negation of the history, say before the Soviet times or even before the war period so the rejection of all this seems to be a history, it seems to be this disappearing. And then when we negate or when they negate historical events, far away events and then long ago events and then, then Kastus-Kalinovsky times, when they were considering the uh, events and developments in the 1930s, uh, then war with Poland. First of all, the point was made, focus was made on uh, some, some black uh, moments in history. And then one more issue related to state uh, activity, state approach. So I would rather say uh, fight against the national identity. It's absence of some kind of branched or say the, the classified, categorized stories and absence of, uh, say, self-identity or self-reflection. So the things that is based, if we take, for example, when the national identity was uh, uh, reflected via society, then the society was still thinking what this kind of identity is. Philosophers have been thinking, Tatiana, for example, this, uh, artists, sportsmen did. When uh, there is a reference, this kind of uh, identity, this kind of uh, identity, this uh, civil approach, this ethnic approach, well, this kind of stuff would be in our side. This kind of speculations, I would say, are typical for the society. So the society, when far away compared to the state, the state accelerating uh, or stopping or, or even destruction of this kind of national identity and idea, allowing it on the local and ethnographic level, 
so that to make sure that is uh, inscribed or included into bureaucratic program so that the box is ticked this kind of autonomous activity is meant what is considered the national identity so then then if it's real national identity issue is raised it's considered with a suspicion so what is my observation i need to say that from moral point of view it was quite difficult uh, to read many state resources because they're really black uh, propaganda was uh, there uh, and it was quite typical thanks a lot would like to uh, remind you that there's uh, uh, questions and answers, discussion. So please raise your hand one at a time. If you want, switch on the mic, ask the question. Uh, Let me read one, one of these. The question based by Max Dmitriev, whether it is possible to consider at present that small and medium-sized business are outside the politics at present. Ну так, я б якраз звернув увагу на те, як справа ці то політиці, ці то фаза політики, як на просто процеси, а акуратно справи зв'язані з ідентичністю. Голос influenced by the politics or outside the politics. How the state is in by different models and strategy of behavior of business. Which of these uh, became participants of the uh, civil events and developments, activities. Others uh, did not uh, involve directly, but uh, indirectly supported. So it's evidences whether business is afraid or not afraid, uh, issues related to national identity to be raised, to be involved, Make, making use of the uh, National and high historic symbols could be considered dangerous for certain businessmen, but at the same time, it could become part of uh, elements of the threat for the companies. So it seems to me that it's one of exactly of the one of the factors that uh, general politicization of the situation and the activity of business in this respect, in this direction. And uh, no serious initiatives are, but these issues are made to make sure that uh, companies uh, are cautiously approaching this because it's dangerous, it's not safe for them to be involved. In one of these, so my, my subjective point of view, one participant is not much. And it's number of uh, Many of such companies became uh, hostages of political situation, political developments, ben, depending on which they have been responding, whether they were uh, uh, stating or making statements on national identity or just uh, avoiding it. And for example, can be a new barrier. Because on the other hand, even without any specific statements, there are some companies not personally expressing themselves. But at the same time, no uh, uh, housing complex could uh, be referred uh, to. Uh, so it's 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 just how many uh, the level of respect uh, to national symbols uh, on the part of the buyers uh, of these apartments. Uh, or some, uh, some people uh, simply uh, installing uh, 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 red, red and green flag, which is official flag. In this respect, business becomes a hostage of this kind of situation. Whether they express the position or not, they, they are involved in this process for them. But from the other hand, it, unfortunately, it's indexes, so it's, uh, business is not that active as it could have been in other contexts or in other situations. Thank you. I would like to add, very few data is uh, presented 
Это просто нишмат звезд. Потому как сказать про динамику, еще рано. Безумно, безумно, безумно. Когда мы увидим, что это больше корыстно. Если мы могли увидеть и анализировать больше компаний, то было бы лучше. Давайте посмотрим, что будет происходить. Но жизнь идет, история идет, и тогда развития и активности на пути. Это правда. Правильно? Да. Next question. Uh, this is from Paul. No, no, uh, what changed in Belarusian identity between April 2020, prior to elections, and uh, current situation, uh, April 2021? Very good question. Uh, let me say from the very beginning that in relation to the, this period was not involved uh, in analysis and did not become a part of the index. So it was impossible to uh, build uh, graphs. Sim simply uh, was not possible to, to consider the in the course of um, studies. If we speak about general, if we get outside the Indus uh, borders, I would uh, refer to these elements. Probably I would ask colleagues to elaborate on what I say. First of all, we need to mention the uh, huge number of cases of the uh, use of national sim uh, symbols. And this was possible to trace on photos and videos. And then symbols, national symbols that are used not only outside the apartments and uh, dwellings, inside uh, at balconies and windows, uh, which became uh, the government uh, became uh, un unhappy with this and started even criminalizing this uh, kind of uh, actions. Uh, in the previous years, we were able to see the state trying to find common points, common grounds, whether this was possibly not well, not good. But in the history, there's kind of opposition reflected, but there's always threat and danger for the government, for the state, for the business. The, the government and business is existed, coexisted, and it was more or less appropriate. And these days, uh, the state considers uh, any expression of national identity as national threat. And then the major difference is uh, the government has never been in love with white and red and white flag, but these days they, they simply hate it. And then many articles in, in press, in official press, were negatively approaching the, uh, reflecting the national flag. The society does a lot in order to uh, demonstrate its interest to his national history and national symbols. Whereas the government, the state, has its, uh, less, uh, say, lack of uh, culture, and it's trying to, uh, say, uh, reduce its importance. I see the hand raised by Piotr. Yes, it's outside the identity. However, it's important to mention, I would like to share my suggestion. The results of the social studies in May 2020 compared to June, uh, January 2021. If we speak about uh, white, red and white, Black as a state and then a coat of arms, Pagonia, pursued. In May 2020, 23%, not much, were for it. January 2021, 32%. The uh, polling was done by one and the same uh, source via internet and then via uh, telephones. Cities locations and uh, so the same method was used to uh, uh, put this question what considers what is considered the official uh, soviet symbols official symbols uh, used these days in may 2020 66 percent 
considered as state in January. One percent has been considering only huge difference is evident in terms of reduction of uh, trust to the symbols as well. There is one more issue. So the uh, attitude of Belarusians have been changed, whether you consider Belarusians is a separate nation or it's a part of uh, Slavic nation, which is consisting of three nations, Belarusians, Russians and Ukrainians. In May 2020, 55% believed against 41% which uh, has been considering Belarus as a separate na nation. In January 2021, we have the situation, we had the situation almost 48 and 47 accordingly, or say almost equal in this respect. In this respect, dynamics is uh, really different as national values so the formula of the national identity has not been changing, then uh, we could say that here, in this case, changes are drastic and are really different. My personal point of view, the trend would continue because authorities are actively motivating, stimulating people, uh, giving them impetus, because they are actually uh, hysterically fighting against the uh, white, red and white, and then pursued so that people ask questions. Hey, look, we have been taking these flags, this is influenced by Washington, uh, and people consider this is necessary to have more information about it, so that authorities and, and the government is trying to uh, influence this from a negative point of view. Certainly, in this respect, there is a, a meta logic is in place pursued by the government. Yes, Andrei, please. I would like to add what used to be before and what is now. We haven't been pre preparing this considerable uh, figures. However, observations can be referred to. Yes, indeed, before August, there are a number of things that have been widening. There's quite quite a while ago, the Russian society considers national identity in radio, in newspapers, and what is national identity, what is national idea. These issues have been raised all, uh, all the time. Uh, И теперь в это все пошло в ширки. И мы имеем выбух того, что вот все эти процессы, да, и бизнес так само, и и реклама и шла на белорусском, и уикенды самые разные ладились. То есть так само бизнес and these days it uh, has been expanding, really was supported widely. What is more important uh, on, on the basis of this white, uh, red and white flag, they have been developing local communities, uh, district communities, uh, say precinct communities with local flags based on the uh, historic Belarusian flag. Also, a funny situation was uh, uh, referring to official flag, uh, red and green. And the funny situation was a lot of things can be uh, referred to about uh, white, red and white. Uh, they were speaking about historical events. However, 
nothing was mentioned about green and red because basically there was no history behind it. Nothing to tell. Basically, there was a simple bureaucratic approach. So the question has a reason why uh, there's a combination of white, red and white colors. So this symbol, there's a key element which is uniting the society. When they destroy the symbols, they destroy society. So the colors uh, of the flag are symbols. It's not Soviet, it's not Lukashenko proposed. They are different, really Belarusian. Thank you. Probably I would voice the uh, question whether the people would visit our website on YouTube. The question is as follows. How could you uh, explain hysteric combat of the authorities of white and red and uh, white color? If this kind of pressure was Vadim, not uh, in place, whether this flag would have been considered so important? Yes, I would like to answer this question. I would add to what my colleague stated. It is related, I mean, for the authorities, for, for the uh, official state, it is important to say that green and red flag is official. green and red has no negative emotions on the, and then interest that was provoked by the people, rank and file people, so it's going from the bottom and it's causing threats to the officials. So, simply they uh, place shirts of white, red and white shirts hanging as the... Uh, authorities consider this kind of a protest. Uh, so this, uh, this kind of color, the fight is lost, lost because you cannot ban uh, white, red and white colors because because, so uh, even blood is having uh, white cells and red cells, so you cannot ban the white and red cells. But at the same time, I think this is not the case when the ban So there's inability to win a separate case when the uh, ban resulted in uh, increased interest. So this was really high because uh, until serious ban was introduced, uh, severe ban was introduced, it seems to me that this ban has been uh, resulting in creative approach of people. So if you cannot uh, place your uh, flag in the window, so people would be using, uh, would be looking for other ways to demonstrate this uh, adherence and interest to national identity. So this kind of bans uh, would push people to Andrei think Kriloska. about the Thank new you. developments and ideas and actions. Andrei, I would like to add what is considered. So uh, when they ban colors, historically speaking, this first attack of this kind used to be in 1995 when the referendum was conducted. And then this uh, red and green flag was introduced. This was basically a political fight with Belarusian people. And this political contradiction, political opposition, political say, and then it was necessary to cr crush the uh, opposition. And it uh, was, as, as it was crushed, and they attacked Belarusian uh, white and red and white flag. This is the only struggle with symbols has not been typical only for 1995. History has shown that after uh, 
resurrection of uh, Kostus Kalinovsky was suppressed by uh, Muravyov. They're actually introducing black colors. So they've been pursuing black colors as the uh, mourning of the uh, uh, say insurrection that was uh, suppressed. And this was at the level of symbols. So the Tsarist authority were uh, suppressing uh, people who has been mourning the, the uh, defeated uh, appraisal. Well, one more question. Natalia Grebe, uh, State University named after Maxim Tank. The, what is wrong with Belarusian identity? I'll tell you what, it's a difficult question. So what can be wrong? If we consider this, if we discuss this issue, the, the problem is in the conflict when actions of the political party, as a threat to the state, as a threat to the party, 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 equalization. People are speaking Belarusian language. They're interested in Belarusian history, Belarusian flag. And so they are considered opposition extremists. It's uh, probably unfair to say, but in any normal state, when people are interested in their own uh, language, their own history, should be promoted, should be assisted, and should be strengthened. In Belarusian case, it's uh, the ground for political crisis. And then there are attempts. If you look at this, when you uh, read Belarusian uh, official newspapers about the fl na national flag from the regular political context, they get outside and they touch history. So red, red and blue. So they are even stronger influencing the crisis. So the, these issues are deeper than uh, considered that uh, say this, this period at power of Lukashenko, basically because there are elements of the national identity. Problem is that this conflict is growing and there is no unified approach. The problem is there are uh, no respect to identity, even of those uh, opponents. So this powerful uh, civil society, uh, the national identity, when history, language and symbols, when they are respected by everyone, and they're not just a kind of a chain, uh, small coin, uh, in unimportant. Important element in the conflict, uh, the Andrei, national crisis. I would like to elaborate. We can say we, we observe exclusive, exclusive, negative issues. Uh, one form of Identity is exclusive negative, which is demonstrated by the people at power. And there is a tendency to make the people inclusive, which is there, inclusive. Which includes material. If we look at the material, if we take the material, which have, we have been analyzing, was not rejected. Uh, we have been uh, watching events and developments. People were bringing uh, red and white, and red and uh, red and green. So we do not reject uh, desire of people to use official flag. So this is all part of Belarusian culture. And we see uh, this kind of conflict, exclusive type. So, but it would be narrowing rather than widening. Identity uh, of inclusive nature, uh, of inclusive type is Belarusian, which, uh, which society uh, proposes, which is developed and generated by the society, this or that way. Thank you.
Well, colleagues, if there are any other questions, issues, we do have literally 10 minutes. If you want asking questions or raising questions, do not hesitate. So it's either now or never. So please, there's one more issue. One more question, Sergei Stary. If I is representing the Center of European Studies of Belarusian uh, University in Krakow. And the question is as follows. What are the most important players that are changing Belarusian identity and Belarusian sovereignty? Belarusian sovereignty is in place for the time being, thanks God. If we speak about major players, then questions related to registration. Do I understand you right? Yes. Of course of presentation, we have been answering that uh, the most important player is Belarusian society that is changing the attitude. People are not associated themselves with the state, with the uh, government. So uh, independent people basing uh, their activity on the civil initiatives. Then inclusive identity that Andrei was uh, referring to is important. And the highest number of points were attributed to the um, August activities. And this is related to national identity. Nobody has been mentioning what kind of flags Belarusians will have to carry. So nobody was saying that you have to make precinct or community flags based on the Belarusian red and white and the red flag. These are important elements to draw conclusions. Where these initiatives uh, that expressed by the mass media, and this would be considered by the society as strengthening the identity, rather than a threat to the uh, existence of the state. Because initiative was coming uh, from the root and then people were bringing their uh, own flags at their uh, community level. It's important so that these initiatives are at least understood or even better way supported rather than at present opposed. So society is the most important player and it's expressing the supported decentralized way uh, starting from the grassroots level. Thank you. So I do see no questions in chat. Thank you very much indeed for sharing the indices of national identity. Thank you for the presentation. So it turned to be a virtual uh, fora of the press club. Thanks very much indeed, and all the best. Thanks very much indeed. I would like to uh, make a little st uh, announcement. Thanks God to the, uh, would like to express gratitude for the preparation of the presentation. Last but not the least, we are planning to prepare more presentations related to indexes of identity, and we would be uh, working on this in the next period. We would be happy to receive your feedback, questions, uh, your suggestions, your ideas, what you consider important. And then we would be happy to analyze it and continue this kind of activity. And I'm grateful to all participants, to everyone.